Hello, welcome to Michelle Sews Again. I'm Michelle. Today I'm going to share with you how I did on my Make 9 for 2022 and what I have planned, if I have plans, for a Make 9 for 2023. If you're interested to hear what I have to say, then please stay tuned. Okay, so before I get started, I'll show you. I made my bellbird top with that gorgeous fabric that Trish gave me. I'll insert some video here so you can see it. Um, I won't be doing a review on this because this is the eighth bellbird top that I've made, so I'll put it on Instagram, but um, I love it. I love the fabric. I'm so happy that this is this top that I decided to use this fabric for. Very happy. All right, so let's get into my 2022 Make 9 progress. So, um, spoiler alert, I did not succeed <laughs> with all nine, which I think I alluded to in my last um, Friday Sews video. So, let's just get started. I'll pop the picture up here and I'll talk about them from left to right, top to bottom. All right, so the first thing that I had on my list was a perfect fit pair of pants. I had the Moji pant from Seamwork, which is what's pictured in the photograph here um, that I had started working on back in 2020. Um, I didn't pick those up again. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I just, I feel <laughs> um, it, it's not pressure because nobody's pressuring me, but I feel uh, FOMO maybe because the perfect fit pair of pants seems to be on everybody's list. Everybody wants a perfect fitting pair of pants or trousers or jeans. I just don't wear them that much. I live in leggings with oversized tops, sometimes pretty, sometimes slouchy. Um, and I have a handful of jeans and pants that fit me fine that are ready to wear and I'm good with that. So I've kind of moved on from feeling the need to keep up with the Joneses, if you will, on that particular topic. So that one, I didn't succeed and I won't be putting that back on my list. I do still want to eventually finish those Moji pants. I don't know when I'll get around to it. All right. The second thing that I had on my list that I wanted to complete was a leather color block um, crossbody bag. Again, I didn't succeed in that. I do still want to make that. Um, I just, I have a nice leather crossbody bag that I wear all the time. It's comfortable. So I haven't felt an urgent need. I, I put that on my list because I had a leather crossbody bag and the straps broke and there, the it tore, like there wasn't any way to repair it. And I had forgotten that I had this other bag up tucked away in my closet. So I thought I would just make one to replace the one that broke and it turned out that I already had one. It's not color block, so I do still want to do that, but again, it's not urgent on my list, so I won't be putting that on this year's list. Um, the third thing that I had on my list was I wanted to learn how to crochet a granny square. The reason that I had that on my list is because I do want to eventually crochet a blanket. I'm super inspired by a um, color block. I don't know what the right term is. I think she used scrap yarn, um, but Sarah from Naughty Gnome Crafts here on YouTube, I will link her channel in the description box. I'm sure you're already following her. She is a multi-talented woman, let me tell you. She knits, she crochets, she sews, she weaves her own yarn or spins her own yarn. I mean, come on. But she had made a granny square blanket. I think she made it for her niece. I'm not 100% sure. She made it last year. I love that thing. It was gorgeous. And I was super inspired to um, try and make one. So I thought, let me just at least start with a granny square. I did kind of make one. So I'm checking this one as a yes. I'll see if I can find a picture of it and I'll insert it. Mm. I don't know. I didn't perfect it, that's for sure. <laughs> so that might still be on my wish list, but it's not going to go back on my make nine. 
The fourth thing on my list was to ice dye a pair of sneakers. And I'm happy to say that I did succeed in this one. I did a collaboration with Trish from Pinky's Farm. I think we did it in April. And we both um, tie dyed some shoes. Hers came out so stinking cute. I'm gonna link her channel below. Um, I tried two different techniques. I did ice dye the way that I normally do ice dye, where I sprinkled the, um, the dye on and then I covered the sneakers in ice. And then I also tried it with Sharpies because that's supposed to um, be another way. I did some YouTube research. I did Pinterest research. People make these come out really cute. You uh, draw your design on with uh, colorful Sharpies and then you use alcohol to kind of disperse the ink and make it look tie-dye-ish. Mine didn't come out. My regular ice dye sneakers came out really cute. The Sharpie ones, not so much. Bye, Hercules. <laughs> um, the fifth thing that I had on my list was knit socks. I want to knit a pair of socks. It's been on my list for two years. I started working on them earlier this year. I don't remember why I needed those needles and I had to pull them out and I, cause I hadn't gotten very far. I mean, I'd gotten that much of a toe done. Um, so I do still wanna make those not gonna be on my list. I have to be in the mood for knitting. And so I don't wanna feel the pressure. I know I'm gonna do it eventually. I just don't know when. Um, I had a faux jumpsuit on my list and I made three faux jumpsuits. So can I count those three as three separate entries? Probably not. Um, my first one was in January with a collaboration with Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room. That wasn't a super successful project. Um, I liked each of the pieces separately, but when I wore them together, I kind of looked like a clown. The shirt is too big for me, so I do need to take it in. It's still in my mending pile. It's complete, it's just a little big. The pants, I thought that I might wear them with like a solid top, but I'm not going to. So those are gonna get just recycled. The top I will wear though. So um, it wasn't successful as a faux jumpsuit, but I did like the top. I used the Paddington top from Peppermint Magazine for my top and I color blocked it. And I used the Poppy pants from Sinclair Patterns, which is my only pant pattern that I will ever need because it's just a relaxed, elastic waist, loose fitting pair of pants and that's all I'm gonna wear anymore. So, um, I made those so I got the the good thing with that is I worked with the pattern enough to get it to fit so that now every time I use that pattern it fits <laughs> um, it's I wouldn't call it the perfect fit pair of pants from option number one because my idea with that was really more of not a structured pant but it wasn't this loose loungy style of pant all right so the second faux jumpsuit that I made was a collaboration with Andra from Andra Makes, and that one was more successful. I used the Cielo top um, for the top, and I used the Poppy pants from Sinclair again, and I used this fantastic rainbow stripe fabric. It was a Katie Cortman design from Spoonflower, and I love that outfit. I wear that outfit. I love it. The third faux jumpsuit that I did was in October, and that was in support of V from 85th and Wade. She was hosting a Sew, Romp, Jump, Play challenge in support of National Jumpsuit Day. And so she had a lot of different vloggers um, participating in that and I posted a video on it. I was going to make a, I did make a real jumpsuit um, and the measurements for that pattern were way off. It was a McCall's pattern, cute outfit. I fully lined the bodice, like I went all out on that. And I mean, there was like this much of a gap in the back. There was, I just, even if I was able to get it to fit, I wasn't gonna wear it. It was just too snug. I, even to get it, if to make it look right, it would have been tighter than I care for my clothes to fit. So I'm not gonna, work on that anymore. I'm just going to recycle the fabric. But um, in support of the challenge, I decided to go with a faux jumpsuit because that's 
a, a regular jumpsuit is just not in my lifestyle these days. Um, so the faux jumpsuit I made uh, using a, I think it was a simplicity pattern. Um, I'll link the video um, where I talked about it here in the cards. Um, but I used a really fun kind of a, almost like a peacock or marble, a combination of those two, kind of a print from Joanne. And I made the, it was just like a v-neck top and the pants were similar to the poppy pant. Not quite as good of a fit on me. Um, and those were the complete opposite of the McCall's. Those pants were so oversized, it was ridiculous. Following the measurements on the packaging, they were just huge. I had to take four and a half inches off each side and they were still too big. I don't know, go figure. Um, anyway, so I made three faux jumpsuits this year. My seventh make nine item was to make one dress a girl dress a month from January through September. I did not achieve that either. I made four. I made one in January, one in February, and then I made two in September for um, Project Dress a Girl Month. So um, I probably, I'm not gonna put that back on my Make Nine, but that is a goal of mine again this year is to make one Dress a Girl Dress a Month in support of that um, fabulous challenge. The eighth thing that I had on my list was to upcycle a thrifted item. And I did that a couple of times actually the first one, not first, but one of the ones that comes straight to mind is the upcycled jacket that I made in collaboration with Marty from Sewing Nerd Confessions. She and I did upcycled jackets for the Sew Purple to End ALZ challenge and I used some thrifted jeans and a thrifted tablecloth and then I ice dyed the jeans, reverse I ice dyed them. I used some leather that I had in my stash um, and that was a fun project and I'm really happy with the way that jacket turned out. Um, I think I upside, oh yeah, um, also in the So Purple to End ALZ Challenge, my uh, collaboration with Ruan from um, the Yorkshire Sew Girl, we both made the wide strap maxi from Peppermint Magazine and I used a thrifted sheet and I ice dyed it and that was my um, second upcycled item. I don't know if I had any others. Doesn't matter. The final item on my Make 9 for 2022 was to participate in one challenge a month. I did not succeed in this either. I had actually had a couple of months during the year where I didn't do anything, any sewing at all. So um, I definitely didn't achieve that challenge. I could go through, I didn't go through and tally up how many challenges I did participate in, but it wasn't one a month, I can tell you that. But I, I did quite a few. So with that said, what I, so that's my second year in a row, not achieving my make nine, which I don't feel bad about. So let's just get that straight. I don't put pressure on myself. This is more of a guideline. It's things that I want to get accomplished during the year. But if I get sidetracked with other things, then that means that was something that I wanted to do more than what was on my make nine. So um, I don't feel bad about it. I hope that if you didn't achieve your make nine that you don't feel bad about it either. This is a hobby. We're supposed to be having fun. So don't stress yourself out over it. It's just getting some ideas on paper, right? All right, but with that said, it would be nice to complete a make nine, right? So I have, I've changed my focus this year to focus on things that I want to make. Like I know that I want these, I need these. I already know that these are patterns that I am excited about. So I am in desperate need of tops. I've talked about this for many months um, to wear during the day while I'm working so that when I'm on Zoom calls, I'm not looking like, you know, a bum in, a, in you know, my sleep t-shirt. <laughs> so I've picked nine patterns from my existing pattern stash. And let's see, I haven't made any of these. I've made one of them as a dress, but not as a top. And the rest of them are all gonna be brand new makes for me. And they're all in, I, I went through all of my top patterns and narrowed it down to ones that are, are 
an everyday kind of a style for me. So I have lots of top patterns that are a little bit more elaborate than what I would wear with leggings or with jeans. Um, or maybe I'd wear them with leggings and jeans, but they're more, they're not something I would wear just as an everyday top, if that makes sense. But all of these that are on my list are tops that I would just throw on and wear with leggings or throw on and wear with jeans and not think twice about it. So the first one is the Betty, whoa, oh wait, before I get started, I want to show you what I did. Let's see. So that's my Make 9. I put it up on a bulletin board so that I can see it all the time because that's another reason I don't finish my Make 9s is because they're not front and center all the time. But what I did this time with my fun Cricut machine is I designed it and had it printed out on my Cricut. I'll put a closer up picture um, so you can see what I did. But basically I downloaded the line drawings of all the patterns and converted them to a print then cut and just um, did a draw version on my Cricut um, and then did fun fonts to identify each of them. And so it's a cute, like, it's a cute board. I like it. Anyway, so the first top on my list is the Betty Woven Tunic from Stylark. I love this top. It is um, it's just a basic, uh, and let's see, one, two, out of all nine patterns that are on my list, only one of them is a knit. I much prefer wovens. I know I'm abnormal. <laughs> I know most people prefer knits. I just prefer wovens. I like to sleep in knits and exercise in knits, but for an everyday, um, look, if I'm trying to look put together, knits just aren't for me. I and that doesn't mean that I don't think they can look put together because they absolutely can it's just I don't know if it's a block in my mental uh styling methodology or what but I just prefer woven so um all right so the first top is the Betty Woven tunic it is just a basic woven kind of a t-shirt look um except it's got the interesting detail of a high low hem it's a straight high low hem with um a split uh it's a split hem. Um, I have not thought about fabrics for any of these yet, so I'm not going to try and pair up any fabrics um, yet. So maybe that'll be a separate video. Uh, my second top is the is the I, it I put the Emmy blouse from Seamwork on my board. But it is either going to be the Emmy or the Carmen blouse from Dongo Designs. Um, I'm leaning kind of towards the Carmen, even though I put the Emmy on my board. They're both very similar. They're both peasant style tops. The difference is the Carmen has um, raglan sleeves and the Emmy is set in sleeves. Um, other than that, they both have the peasant style neckline. Um, the Carmen top does have a shirred um, waistband which I wouldn't do anyway and the car and the Emmy is a, sh a little bit short so either one of those I would just do a longer straight hem um, and the difference really is mostly that sleeve other than that they're very similar um, the third style that I'm going to do is the only knit in the group and it is the Forte knit top from Love Notions and I want to do view A which is just a short sleeve tee with a little peplum not even a peplum um, it's just a ruffle around the hem and I think that's cute um, and that's one that's you know a little bit you know nicer looking than just a basic tee um, which is why I think it would look good. Um, all right, the fourth style is the Joan woven top from Style Arc. This is just a nice basic v-neck. It's got a center seam, grown on sleeves, totally my style. I may or may not color block it. I probably will color block it. We'll see. The fifth style on my list is the Cali shirt. Now I have made two Cali shirt dresses and I really enjoyed making both of those, but I really like the Cali shirt. I think it looks really cool. I love the image um, on the plus size girl on the website. 
Um, so yeah, I really want to make a shirt version of that. I will make the tunic length, not that short crop length. That's not for me. The sixth style is probably a little bit more than an everyday style, but I would wear it as an everyday style. It's the Kenny top from Style Arc, and it's just got that big, fun statement collar. And if I make it in the right fabric, then I think that could be a great, just like everyday throw on shirt. We'll see. The seventh top, again, I've got a lot of Style Arc in here. So obviously Style Arc is my kind of style, is the Mod Woven Tunic. This is, it almost looks like a poncho style. It just looks like it's, you know, it buttons up the front. It's got a collar, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but it's like the, it's not even grown on sleeves. It's like the fabric goes, it's just like a rectangle. And then the um, side seams are kind of sewn in under the arm, but then there's extra fabric hanging out. You can see it in the line drawings. I'm not explaining it very well, but um, I have a shirt that um, in a chambray that's very similar to that that I bought that was ready to wear, and I wore the heck out of that thing. So I definitely know that I will wear this. The eighth pattern that I have on my list is the Norma from Fiber Mood. This was super popular in the last couple of years, and it's just a v-neck button-up with some statement sleeves. Perfect everyday kind of a style. The final style that I have on my Make 9 for 2023 is the Selena Woven Top, also from Style Arc. This is just a cute, like, crew neck style woven top, and it's got a little baby ruffle around the sleeves. Yeah, around the sleeves and the hem. And the hem is kind of a curved hem, and it's a high-low. And I thought that looked really cute. So that, I, I'm excited about every one of those tops. I have a feeling I'm gonna get my Make 9 done pretty quickly because these are all things that I really actually need in my wardrobe right now. I would love to hear if you have done a Make 9, were you successful? Are you planning to do a Make 9? Do you get bummed out when you don't complete them? If so, then it might not be a good project for you because there's no need to stress yourself out, right? Anyway, that's it for me today. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in and I will talk to you next time. Bye.